really should just wait for the light to be better. Here's the deal. I have filmed this video three times over all the way through. This one, this one, this one's it, okay? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie and this is Budget Bondi, where I help you achieve your goals through frugal living. All right, so before I hop into today's content, I want to let you guys know about this really cool thing coming up on my channel. I'm gonna be doing Frugal February, where I'm posting not once, not twice, but three times a week in February. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, look for uploads the entire month of February, as opposed to my usual Thursday uploads. All right, now let's get into it. So budgeting is typically the first step to reaching your financial goals. If you're curious on how to budget step-by-step, step, I have a whole video on it, which I will link down below for you to check out right after this one. In that video, I walked you through more of the outline of how to budget in general. What I want this video to do is to really take a deep dive and show you how I've taken those steps and I've applied them. So this is our actual budget tracker, well, a copy of our budget tracker that I've removed some personal information from. But this is what we use to track our finances and to budget both for our short term, like our day to day expenses, our month to month expenses, and those long term goals. So let me put on my blue light glasses here and start the screen recording. All right, here we are. So I'm gonna walk you guys through our budget tracker tab by tab. So again, if you want to know how to budget, go out, go ahead and check out the other video, but this is how you maintain once you've created a budget. Um, this is our, our tracker that we use every single day. So we use Google Sheets, but feel free to use whatever is most comfortable to you. Um, I use Google Sheets only because one, it's that online platform that can be shared so my husband and I can both work on it at the same time or look at it on our separate devices. Um, and two, because I'm really, really familiar with Excel myself and the formulas and how the back end and programming works. So I'm able to build macros or whatever if we need them down the road. And while Sheets isn't exactly the same, it's really, really similar. So um, those are the two reasons that we've decided to go with Google Sheets but just make sure that you use a platform that you're comfortable with, even if it's a pen and paper, just something that you will stick to. So this is our first tab, the expenses tab. So this is what we use to track our actual spending. We track every single purchase. So every line item is a purchase. Now I will start off by saying I did change some information. So on this location column, every single city that we had, I changed just to San Francisco and then I changed our car name and the credit cards that we have. I just renamed to credit ABC and whatever, but you guys will get the idea. So you'll see that for every single purchase, is a, there's a couple of things that we track no matter what. We'll, we'll track the date, the store, the location, the amount, um, the category and the payment method for every single line item, every single thing that we buy. Um, most of these are pretty self-explanatory date the store where you bought it the location we like to keep track of even if even if it's online you'll see a lot of these online purchases but just so we know where this money was actually spent obviously how much we spent um, and then the description is more of a note if it's something out of the ordinary so i won't put a description under groceries for example but we will put it in for our December rent, so know exactly that what what that was. Oh, where did we spend two twenty five to the city? Oh, that was a parking meter. So those things that don't immediately come to mind for what you're spending it on, it's always good to remind yourself. Um, so that when you're looking at your debit card, your bank statement, your credit card statement, you know what those things are. The category and subcategory. Um, we I formatted it so we can just pick from a drop down menu here. So. Once I click a category such as food, the subcategory resets itself and then I can pick, is it groceries or is it eating out? So that is kind of just how our drop downs work and I'll get back to those categories and subcategories in a minute. The payment method, you'll see cash, you'll see the different credit cards and debit cards and then gift cards and Venmo. So those are basically all of the methods we use to pay for things. Um, if there's another method that you use or if you don't have a credit card or something like that, 
it's up to you but we just like to keep track of not only what was paid and how much was paid and where it was paid but what method we used to pay as well and then we have those extra columns that we don't fill out for everything so i just mentioned the description was one that's just kind of a note to ourselves and then this notes column is another one that isn't always filled out and this is more of so if a description is a reminder of what this transaction was about the notes is like a hey we need to take another look at this so for example here are we being chart like are we being double charged basically we need to call that company and figure it out but the description was telling us this was a car rental from traveling all right so hopefully that oh and then the mpg over here totally unrelated to budget tracking and spending but we just find it really helpful every single time we put a gas expense into this tracker we can just put in what our mpg was just so that we know moving on to our expense chart so I'm a big data person, but specifically a data visualization person. And I'm not sure where our chart went. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, so where the other tab was just straight up our data, every single line item of everything we were spending in what category and whatever, this is a high level summary. So I can look at from the time that we've started tracking or I can look at what's probably more helpful over the last year. If we had a full year, we would have uh, six months of the last year or by month. So if I, it's only 2020, 2021, but if I clicked on uh, clear, if I just want to know what we spent in November of last year, it's going to show me the total. It's going to break it down by those categories and it's going to show me in a pie chart so I can see where our money is going. Now, what's interesting is to kind of compare this to one, our actual monthly budget, which we will get to in a minute, and two, to months against themselves and kind of track it over time. So if this was November, if I look at October, I'm noting, oh, our pie chart's staying really exactly the same. So our spending's pretty consistent between those two months. And I will just do that for kind of each month over time and seeing if we're being really consistent or for example, as expected, are we spending more on gifts in December or travel? Um, so that's one way to use it. And then the other way that I had just mentioned is to compare this to our actual monthly budget. So if I go over to our monthly budget, this is not a fluid sheet. This sheet is set every time Jeff and I, you know, sit down whenever we choose to evaluate our you guys hear that knocking our neighbors upstairs i think it's their dog just like where was i monthly budget okay so uh what i just say it's not fluid okay so this will only change when jeff and i sit down with the intent and purpose to look back over our monthly budget and maybe adjust where it's needed other than that this document once it's set for the time being it's set, it's just a reference document of what we should be spending each and every month. So you'll notice that we have our general monthly budget. So these would be considered our day-to-day -day expenses, which is what I will go back and compare our expense chart to every month. So this expense chart is a living breathing sheet that shows how our data is actually changing what we're actually spending depending on what we input into our spending tracking or our expenses tab so the general data the expenses tab leads to the chart which helps us evaluate our monthly budget you see that so you could you know go through and just filter your expense tab every single month and kind of see where you land. But I really like having this separate uh, sheet specifically to summarize the data because all the data does nothing on its own. You need to be able to summarize and visualize data in a good way to make good data-driven decisions about anything really, but in this case, your finances. So we've talked about how we compare that to our general monthly budget, which be, would be considered our general day-to-day -day spending. 
I'm going to glaze over this long-term monthly contributions here for a second and go back because we missed a tab. So this budget categories, I told you I'd come back to the categories. This is what my expense tab or our expense tracking tab references when I want to do these drop downs for my category and then my subcategory built off of that. So this is definitely something you don't need to do to build in those uh, dependent drop downs, but something that, again, like I said, I'm pretty comfortable doing that kind of stuff and it just makes it easier for us. Um, but I do highly recommend coming up with some sort of category system to break up your spending. Um, and I do talk about that in the how to budget video. So I'm not gonna get into too much stuff with it here, except that I will say my advice would be to start as broad as possible when you're building these categories. My personal opinion, I think we went a little too detailed on our categories and subcategories. Um, I would like to see it a little bit more generalized and fewer buckets, but uh, it's working for us. In the future, I would like to simplify it, but I think if you start as broad as possible, you can always niche down and um, you can say at a later date, you know, okay, we've just been tracking our bills or we've just been tracking our utilities, but I'd like to see how our heat and our water and our electric break out over each and every month. So can we just add that in as a subcategory from, from now on? And that, I think that's just a lot easier to go from general to more specific than it is from fairly specific to more general. So that is my advice. Keep your categories to a minimum if you can. It just makes it simpler. Um, and another thing that I wish that we did with our categories is I wish that we made them match our, oops, match what we're listing as kind of line items in our monthly budget. So I think an ideal category to monthly budget would look like how we have these broken into essentials, subscriptions, and then other. If those were our main categories, essential subscriptions, or you could call this something else, essentials, add-ons, or extras, and then other, whatever you wanna call it. And then our subcategories were these things, rent, utilities, groceries, parking, our Hubble, Netflix, Amazon, and then our allowance and fund money. To me, having your categories directly match your budget, like your budget line items makes perfect sense. And we just really didn't do that. So another recommendation, pro tip, if you can make your categories, match your budget categories. It just, it makes logical sense. Okay, so I said we were gonna skip long-term and come back to it. So now we're gonna talk about the long-term. So I hope you guys have found this helpful so far, talking about how we track our day-to-day -day expenses. So if you have, make sure you hit the like button down below and that you're subscribing so that you don't miss out on content in the future. For our long-term budgeting, this tab is kind of broken. You can see into two different sides. So on the left, we have our long-term goals or debts that we're trying to pay off and it's tracking our progress and on the right we have our line item tracking of what we're contributing to those long-term goals so i'll start over here on the left so this outlines every single one of our long-term goals so again i've kind of simplified this and taken out some personal information um, but i will be having a whole other video about our specific long-term goals that we are working towards financially and how we're doing that with our monthly budget. So make sure in Frugal February, so make sure that you are subscribed down below and you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss that video when it comes out. But if you look at this, so I've got student loans listed out here and what their initial amount was. I've got our down payment that we're saving up for to buy a house. We've got a nest egg we wanna save for and then a car loan you gotta pay off. So I think the what, the initial amount, uh, pretty straightforward. That remaining column references then our right side of the page where we've got this tracker. So this is very, very similar to the general day-to-day -day spending tracker or the expenses tab where I'm, I wanna say, what am I spending it on? So which long-term goal am I contributing to? When did that happen? How did, how was it paid for? 
or in this case, what account did it come from? Because generally with our long-term goals, we're making payments kind of directly from our bank accounts. How much I contributed towards that long-term goal. And then we added an interest column specifically for these loans, where even though the initial amount or your principal is what I'm intending to pay off, you've got to pay interest with it. So how much did I put towards the principal and how much did I put towards interest? But I'll get back to that in a second. So this what is which long-term goal I'm contributing to. So I'm gonna select, let's say I want to just mm, pay some more off towards student loan two. So I'm gonna select student loan two, put in a date where it came from. And then let's say I contribute $800. Now, when I hit enter, make sure you're watching the remaining column for student loan two over on the left-hand side. I push enter and now I've only got 1700 remaining. So it subtracted 1800 from what was remaining. Now let's say I did a total of $800. We're gonna come back to the interest piece. So if I did a total of $800, but I ended up paying $50 in interest in that payment, that means $750 went towards my principal and the other 50 went towards my interest. So the reason that we broke it up like this is so that we could track the total of what I spent. So I know that from account one, I should expect to see $800 drawn and put towards student loan two. But my principal or the amount remaining on that loan is only decreasing by $750 as far as my tracking to, make, to see when I can pay it off. And the other $50 went towards the interest payment. So this Coming back over to the left-hand side here, this remaining column uses a formula to say, look at the initial amount, and then every time that I see <clears throat> that particular long-term goal over on my tracker, add up how much I've paid towards the principal amount and subtract it from my initial amount. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, um, but we like it just so that it shows not only our actual expense tracking as usual, but how that relates to our long-term goals and where we're at with those. All right, so back on this monthly budget tab, I want to I want to point out that over here, we've got this month, long-term monthly contributions. So we've built in contributions to our long-term goals into our monthly budget. We have our income, we wrote out our budget, and we included paying ourselves. So this is going to build off of the idea that we're paying ourselves first. These contributions to the things that we want to accomplish, the goals that we have for ourselves are built into our budget and we're paying them first. So we're paying it just like a bill. It's a required payment we have to make every month and we're paying that bill before we pay any of our other bills because that is the most important contribution that we can make financially. Prioritize your goals and invest in yourself and in your future. All right, so one back, one more reloop back into everything. We've got an expense tab tracking every single expense that we have, every single thing that we buy all the time, all the possible information we could want about that so that we can summarize it then in our expense chart where we have a pivot table here summarizing it nice and neat that I can filter by year and month and to see just our overall spending. We've got a graph so I can look at it visually and make some clear data-driven decisions. We've got budget categories, which we recommend starting broad and then niching down as you see fit. We've got a monthly budget here that I can then compare to my expense chart, to that pivot table to see are we on track with what we said that we would spend on a monthly basis. And within our monthly budget, we're contributing to our long-term goals. We're budgeting for it just like we would anything else. And we're paying ourselves first and prioritizing those goals. And then our long-term spending, our long-term goals, we're tracking where we're at with our goals as well as our normal expense tracking, but translated into long-term goals where those contributions are coming from and when. Okay. Whew. Just walked you guys through our entire sheet. If this was helpful for you guys, please like this video and subscribe and make sure you're hitting that notification bell so that you don't miss every single upload. I'm usually uploading every single Thursday with more content to help you improve your life through frugal living. But in February, remember I'm posting three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so that you have even more content to help you 
reach your goals. Comment down below a strategy that you use to help you track your spending and to budget on a day-to-day -day basis and reach your long-term goals. And with that, I will see you guys next week. All right, have a good one, guys.